With .NET 5 in its GA status for almost a month, let's talk about what it means to do CI CD for it with the tools provided by GitHub Actions and Azure Pipelines. How to build .NET 5 in GitHub Actions and what are the steps needed to use .NET 5 in Azure Pipelines? These and more in today's video. Hi everybody and welcome back to Code Dave. Today we talk again about .NET 5 and we will see how we can do our builds in both GitHub Actions and Azure Pipelines. And we will see if any additional steps are needed and how we can construct our workflows. It's important to notice that when it comes to CI/CD, .NET 5 has many advantages over the previous versions of .NET and even other frameworks and languages. I made a whole video about this, you can find a link up here and in the video description, so I highly encourage you to look at that when we are finished with this one. But just as a recap, .NET 5 is good for CI/CD because it's truly multi-platform, working on Windows, Linux and Mac OS on the 32 and 64 bits, and even in ARM32 and ARM64. Furthermore, .NET 5 is really optimized for containers, and in fact, the team did a fantastic job optimizing the runtime in its lower levels and also providing smaller images that are actually optimized for the multi-stage build. Before we start, make sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and if you want to learn more about DevOps, especially with Azure DevOps and GitHub. Just click on the subscribe button below right now and turn on the notifications so you will not miss any new video. All right, let's go deeper into today's topic, and let's see some information about the availability of .NET 5 on both GitHub Actions and Azure Pipelines. As we will see, the two platforms share a lot of similarities. For example, on both Azure Pipelines and GitHub Actions, .NET 5 is already available on all the Windows agents, being shipped together with Visual Studio 16.8 that, again, is already installed on those machines. However, it's not yet available out of the box on both Linux and Mac OS. On GitHub Actions, the installation of the .NET 5 SDK and runtime will start on December 14th, 2020, so just a few days from now, and should take about two or three days, so I expect that by December 17th, we should have .NET 5 basically in all the agents available in GitHub Actions. For Azure Pipelines, instead, I wasn't able to find a public date for it, but based on what I know and what I can think of, I expect Pipelines will follow the same dates as GitHub Actions, so I think we can expect the installation of .NET 5 on all the agents to start on December 14th as well. However, don't quote me on this because those are not official dates. In any case, even the installation may be delayed or if you don't want to wait until December 17 to start building your .NET 5 on Linux and or Mac, this is not a problem at all on both platforms. In fact, they all provide a way for you to install the version of .NET you need. In Azure Pipelines, we have the task called Use.NET Core, and in GitHub Actions, we have the action called Setup.NET Core SDK. And the only thing you need to do, and you will see this in a moment, is given that the version 5.0.100, which is the current version of .NET 5, and that's it. Now that we have the basics, let's jump into the tools. We will do first in GitHub Actions and then in Azure Pipelines. However, as you know, you can find the timestamp in the video description, so you can jump between those two as you please. First off, this is the application I will use throughout the demos. It's a .NET 5 application, and in fact, if I open a csproj file, we can see that it targets .NET 5. Now, first thing to do is go into Actions, New Workflow, and find the .NET Core Starter Workflow. Here we have it. If we were on Windows, so using the Windows latest, we could actually remove this setup.NET Core and with just these few lines, basically with the .NET Restore, .NET Build, and .NET Test, we would have a fully functioning CI process. Because as we've seen before, .NET 5 SDK is already installed in the Windows agents. But if we want to do this on Linux instead, we can still reuse the setup.NET SDK that we can find here in the marketplace. And what we need is just this. We can copy this here. And remember, we did have this before. I just happened to remove it. And we're going to use the .NET version 5.0.100. When we do so, if we start the comment, we will see that our action has actually started. And if we go to see the logs, we see that we now have this setup.NET Core SDK step. And as you can see, the build is completely successful. 
Also, as you can see, the setup.net core SDK step took only 12 seconds, so it's not really penalizing in a broader picture of the CI CD process. And if we take a look at it, we can see that we have downloaded the SDK from the official.NET repo, we have extracted it and installed on our machine. And that's basically it for GitHub Actions. As we've seen before, if we were doing this on Windows, we didn't even need that additional step. On Linux, we do need. Before we go to Azure DevOps though, I want to mention something else. If we go to the security tab and we look at the code scanning alert, there is something I want to point out here. First of all, remember that code QL analysis and code scanning alerts are really powerful and they are completely free for public repos. So I highly encourage you to take a look at that, but it's of course something that is really useful also for enterprise. Second thing is that if you want to use code QL analysis and you want to use the default workflow, there's something you need to consider. In fact, if you scroll down, we see that CodeQL has this auto build step that try to compile automatically all your compiled languages, including C Sharp. Now, if you're using this on .NET 5 on Windows, you don't have any problem. And in fact, auto build works perfectly and work perfectly also for any other version of .NET Core or .NET Framework. However, for .NET 5, and Linux agents, all the considerations we've seen apply, which means that instead of this auto build step, we should put in here the actions we've just seen. So the setup.NET Core SDK and the build manually by the .NET build script. But apart from that, everything else works perfectly. I just thought it's important to point this out because if you use the auto build on Linux agents for .NET 5, at least until the .NET 5 SDK is installed on the Linux machine, this would fail. Easy, right? Before we move on to Azure DevOps, hit the like button below if you're enjoying this video or you find it insightful. It will help the channel growing and would mean the world to me. We are now in Azure DevOps and let's try to create a pipeline for the same project. So new pipeline, I'm gonna connect to my GitHub repo, which is this .NET Conf 2020. And I'm gonna show more and use the ASP.NET Core sample pipeline. Once again, if we were to do this on Windows, and perhaps let's do it, this is all we would need. So Windows latest or any other agent with Windows and VS 16.8, and just the .NET build task. Let's try to do this. So let's save and run. This is creating the pipeline on my GitHub repo, saving the YAML there, and then kicking off a pipeline execution in Azure DevOps. Now our job has been queued, Let's open this up. All right, the job is starting. And as we can see, we only have the checkout of the code and straight up the .NET build. And as you can see, the build is running and we have this welcome to .NET 5 message. And in fact, we're using the 5.0.100 because once again, .NET 5 SDK and runtime are already installed on the Windows agents. And in fact, the build has finished perfectly. Let's now go back and change this to run on Linux. So let's change this to Ubuntu latest. And what we have to do here is adding the task I mentioned before. So let's make some space over here. Let's go to the task list, search for .NET, and let's pick this use.NET Core. In here, I'll just have to specify the version 5.0.100. If you're watching this video in a later date, probably the current version of .NET 5 would be higher than this, but this is the one current at the moment. And just click add. What this task does, as in the GitHub Actions, will grab the SDK for our .NET 5 version, install it on the agent, and then run the build. Let's save this, and let's run it. Once again, our job has been queued. Let's open this up again. And the job is starting. And as we can see now, we have this use.net step that we didn't have before because we just added it to our Linux pipeline. It's actually running and our build now is running. If we go back to the use.net task, what we see is that the version 50100 was not found in cache because as I said before, it's not yet available on Linux agents. After determining that we are on the Linux x64 and we are actually running on Ubuntu, the task was able to download the proper package, extracting it and installing it on our machine. When it did so, then our .NET build was successful. And as we've seen before, 
the use of this additional step is not really impactful on the overall time. In this case, it's a small solution, so it builds in just eight seconds. Of course, if you have a bigger project or solution, the build time will be higher. So only seven seconds for this step, or like 12 seconds as we've seen in the GitHub Actions are not really impacting in the big picture of the build. And that's basically it for Azure DevOps. We were able to run our build without changing anything on Windows Agents, and we just had to use this use.net SDK additional step just because at the moment the .NET 5 SDK is not installed on Linux, but in few days it should be. So most likely if you're watching this video at a later date, you won't be even needing this additional step. All right, that's it for today. As you've seen, .NET 5 works really well in both GitHub Actions and Azure Pipelines. And in a few days when the .NET 5 SDK and runtime will be installed in all the agents, Windows, Linux, and Mac, even the additional step will not be necessary anymore. Let me know in the comment section below if you're already migrating your applications to .NET 5 and if you're doing CI CD for them. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I see you in the next video here at Coder Dave.